Welcome back everybody, we're in the Piper Cherokee 180. We're just about to complete our before takeoff checklist. So we turn our fuel pump on, and then don't forget the strobe light and landing light. Lights, camera, action, We've got a movable parts mixture, flap zero, and trim neutral for a crosswind takeoff. Before we start doing all these takeoffs and landings, I'd like to point you to the manual real quick. So all the A2A AccuSim airplanes have a wonderful manual. It's got a whole history behind the airplane. It's got a bunch of useful info. So we're looking at the air speeds for normal operation. And the two speeds you really need to look at for takeoff is going to be VX and VY. VX is your best angle of climb speed, 76 miles per hour for the Cherokee. This is going to give you the most altitude gain over a given distance over the ground and best rate of climb gives you the most altitude over a given amount of time. So in a short field takeoff, if you have an obstacle you're trying to clear, you want to climb as fat, you want to climb in the shortest amount of distance, and so you, we're going to climb at VX. Otherwise, every other normal takeoff, you're going to rotate and pitch for VY. So you just start climbing as fast as you can, but you're going to cover more ground that way. So short field, we got VX. Everything else is VY. And then for landing, normal fla normal landing, flaps up 85, and then what we always do, flaps 40, full flaps, is going to be 76 miles per hour. And you can see that's the same procedure and speed for short field approach. In short field takeoff, you see is flaps 25, and a soft field takeoff will also be flaps 25, which is the second notch in this airplane. It goes 10, 25, and 40, versus Cessna's 10, 20, 30. And I'll show the Cessna manual real quick since we've been using that one for the last videos. You got best rate of climb sea level, 79, which is close enough to 80. Best angle of climb is 60. We didn't do a, uh, a short field takeoff in the 172, but this is what you'd pitch for in the 172. And you use 10 degrees flaps, which is the first notch for a short field takeoff. So back into the sim for the Cherokee. We're going to do a crosswind takeoff and landing. We get winds out of the east around 0908 knots. Release the parking brake. One quick real world tip. So we got a left hand pattern on 1 4, so I'm looking throughout this left hand pattern for traffic. And it looks clear, so we're good to go. You could probably also use this on VAT Sim or any other mods of player if you got pattern work going on. So now we're going to line up on runway 14, and for a crosswind takeoff, you're going to want to put the aileron into the direction of the wind. And what this is going to do is increase drag on the opposite side so that the plane can't weather vane into the wind as well. As well. What I mean by weather vane into the wind is we get winds to our left, and we'll start rolling, and it's going to want to bring the airplane more left than normal. Or if the winds are out of the right, it's going to bring the airplane right. And so with the winds out of the left, we got the right aileron down, so aileron into the wind. Right aileron is down, that's going to make more drag on that side versus that side. That'll make the airplane come back around to the right. So it just helps us keep straight. So now we're going to start the takeoff run. And we're not going to hold this aileron in all the time. We'll relieve the pressure as the speed builds. So now we got airspeed alive. We'll slowly come out of that aileron. We still have a little bit of aileron in, we're going to rotate and then just neutralize the ailerons fly normally. And now as you can see the wind is pushing us off the runway to the right so we're just going to let the airplane crab into the wind now. And you still want to maintain roughly coordinated flight so just use the ailerons to bank over a little bit. Okay, so now we're pitching for a VY, which is 85 miles per hour, best rate of climb. As you can see in this plane, it's very easy to go past that. Climbs very well with this 180 horsepower engine. Now that we're a safe distance off the field, go ahead and turn off the fuel pump. And with, uh, with carbureted airplanes, with low-wing airplanes, when you turn off the pump, make sure you check the pressure fuel pressure that it's actually holding. So now that we're within 300 feet of pattern altitude, we're going to go ahead and turn left crosswind, pitching back to maintain VY. And now we're at our pattern altitude, so we need to pitch forward. 
Roll wings level for crosswind. Reduce RPM to 2,000. Turning downwind. We're reducing RPM to 2,000. That'll give us about 90 knots or 100 miles per hour or so. And that just gives us a controllable airspeed to fly in the pattern. So I'll we'll pitch back and get our 1,100 feet back, our pattern altitude. And so remember the winds are out of the east, which is now to the right of us, behind and to our right. And so we need to turn a few degrees into the wind, which is to the right, so that it doesn't blow us back over the runway. We want to maintain the same ground track. So for the crosswind landing, you're going to have to make sure the, the longitudinal axis of the airplane or the tires are pointing straight down the runway when you touch down so that you don't side load. Right now we're going to reduce power to 1600 RPM. First notch of flaps. And we'll make sure our fuel pump goes on. Around 90 miles per hour we'll let the airplane pitch down a bit. 500 feet per minute. Now I'm getting nose up trim to help maintain this. Now we're about 45 degrees off the end of the runway. We're going to go ahead and turn left base. Second notch of flaps. Pitching back so we don't descend too quickly. Rolling's level. Okay, let's start turning final. And we'll go full flaps. And if you remember from the manual, we're going to be pitching for about 76 miles per hour. And you got to watch out for this crosswind. We got a crosswind from the left, and that contributed to us overshooting center line like that. So now we're getting low. Remember, we're going to power for altitude and then use our pitch to maintain 76 miles per hour. Now that we're being established on final, the airplane's going to still want to be pushed off to the right. And so we can sit in a crab like this, but once we start getting closer to the runway, I'm using right rudder now to point the, the nose of the runway straight down the runway, and then banking the airplane slightly left so that we stay aligned with center line. So now I can reduce the power so we can descend normally again, 1600. So see, I got right rudder in to keep it pointed down the runway because otherwise it does this. And then left aileron so that we stay horizontally over the center line. Now I'm going to reduce power because we're over the runway. And we're going to touch down on the left main first, and then the right main, and then the nose wheel. And now you want to bank left into the wind to help cause drag on that right wing so we don't slide to the left off the runway. So now, from here, to save time, we'll demonstrate a short field takeoff. So a short field takeoff is going to be flaps 25, which is two notches of flaps in the Cherokee. We got everything set for takeoff down here. We'll reset our trim. And so for short field takeoff, ideally you'd start with as much runway as you can for it. But for the sake of demonstration, we're going to start here. And we're going to apply full power, hold the brakes, check our engine instruments, and then we're going to roll on the runway until we get to our, our short field takeoff speed, which is 74 miles per hour. And then we're going to pitch for 76, which is VX. So we got full power, temperature, pressure, look OK. Let's roll. Use your rudder to maintain center line. Airspeed is alive. Seventy 
four pitch back, and we're going to pitch for 70. 76. Which is VX. So the field elevation is 50 feet. We've gone just about 200 feet now. So we'll, we'll start reducing our flaps. Flaps up one notch. We still have good airspeed, positive rate of climb. Now we've got flaps up. Now we pitch for VY, 85 miles per hour. I've already flown the pattern once in the Cherokee. I'm going to cut the video here, rejoin when we're moving the numbers, and we'll talk about the short field. And we'll talk about the soft field landing. Alright, so now we're setting up for a soft field landing. 1600 RPM, 10 degrees flaps. We've got our landing light on, fuel pump on. Now we'll descend 500 feet per minute. We've got real world weather loaded back in so we don't have to deal with the crosswinds all the time now. And so soft field landing is just landing as soft as you can and it's essentially a normal landing all the way up to touchdown but on touchdown you will apply a little bit of extra power to keep to keep the wheels rolling a bit because if you're landing in grass or dirt you're going to be slowed down a bit just from the the ground material not being a hard surface and so you want to keep your speed up so that you don't dig the nose wheel in and then with that you also want to keep the yoke all the way back to keep the nose wheel off the ground as much as possible. Okay, so now we're turning final. We're going to put our full flaps in. And as you can see, pattern work is a lot easier in a low wing airplane. You don't have to lean forward and look around the wing. Okay, so now I'm just putting more nose up trim as we keep slowing down here. And at this at, at any point in flight really, for the most part, I just let go of this I let go of the controls to show you that the airplane's not actually trimmed out. And that's what you should aim for. You always want to try to trim the airplane out so you're not fighting it. So we got seventy six miles per hour. To pitch for airspeed, you'd have to pitch down. So we're going to apply power and then pitch down ever so slightly. That keeps us our speed. Now, as we come over the threshold, we're going to reduce the power to idle. Do a normal landing, touch down as soft as you can. And then we're going to add a little power and hold the nose up as long as we can. Okay, so now we hold the nose up, hold the yoke back, apply a little bit of power. It's a little bit high. Bring it down. Get the power in. Let the nose width to slightly touch down, holding the yoke back, keeping our speed up as we taxi off the runway. And you want to avoid using brakes when you can, and that'll be a lot easier in grass because grass, the grass friction will slow you down. So now we're going to set up, set back up for a short field takeoff. And a short field takeoff will be the 25 degrees flaps as well, two notches. And we're just going to spin around here and go back and take off. And so right now we're on a hard surface, and the way they usually do it in a check ride is they'll, they'll define a spot, usually the hold short line, where you're going to start holding the yoke all the way back. So right now we're all set up for takeoff. We're going to start holding the yoke all the way back here, and we're going to go line up for takeoff. And from this point forward, you want to avoid using brakes, and you want to keep the yoke all the way back and keep the airplane rolling. You don't want to stop. So we'll turn, we'll add some power now to keep our speed up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to 
We got the yoke all the way back. As soon as the airplane lifts off, it's going to lift off a lot sooner. We're going to relieve that back pressure, and we're going to fly in ground effect until we get to VY85. So you don't want the airplane to go all the way up like that. So now we're off the ground, get the nose down, and accelerate to VY85. So we keep the nose down like this. We got 85 miles per hour. Now we'll pitch for 85. Now that we have a positive rate of climb, reduce flaps once, everything's still good, reduce flaps again. And that's how you do a soft field takeoff. Okay, I'm going to cut the clip again, and we're going to set up for a, a no flap landing. First, I'll make sure we turn this field pump off and check our pressure. Okay, so for a no flap landing, we have our fuel pump on like always, and no flap landing, we have no flaps. And we're going to set ourselves up to be extra high than normal, because what we're going to do is a maneuver called a forward slip. And so similar to how we were having the controls for our crosswind landing, it's going to involve rudder going one way and aileron going the other way. And what this does is it angles the airplane into, the, into your relative wind, and it causes a lot of drag on the side of the airplane. So now that we're extra high, we'll turn in. And this forward slip you can do throughout the turn. But I'm going to demonstrate it just on final. Actually, we'll show it now. So this is what a normal turn looks like. And you can turn with a slip. So we got right rudder left aileron. You can do a turning slip, so we'll get out of that right now. I'll put the yoke in. Now we're getting aligned with final. We're going to stay high. We still want to keep our speed in check though. But you can definitely see that we're a lot higher than normal. And so some airplanes don't have flaps, and sometimes flaps break, more often in the sim than I've seen in the real world. And so, for those two situations, you can use this forward slip. So now we'll reduce the throttle to idle, right rudder, left aileron. The more rudder you do, the steeper your descent rate would be. So I got full rudder, full right rudder. And then, just like crosswind, the aileron is going to control your drift. And you can see you can descend fairly rapidly and not build up speed when you do a forward slip. And you can do a forward slip in any direction. Here's a forward slip to the left. Now we want to kick rudder back in, get back on center line, add a little power to get us there. And then we just land like normal. Is the first good landing of the day. Nose wheels down, yoke back, apply some brake. And so now that video covers short field landing, or the, it covered soft field landing, soft field takeoff, crosswind landing and takeoff, and a no flap landing, and in a basic pattern with the recommended power settings that I've been using in the Cherokee. And so the, we'll see you in the next video.